Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 1st of March 2021 and the time has just gone 11.27 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Equity markets uh, around, across the board are, um, are showing strong gains. We've also seen a rebound. Uh, we've seen higher prices in metals and oil. So positive sentiment, risk on sentiment across the board. Uh, why is this? Um, well, last week you saw a bit of a, a few occasions, stock markets and metals came under a little pressure last week uh, over concerns uh, on, 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 on due to rising government bond deals. Um, it, the, kind of the belief was that higher move in government bond deals could um, push central banks around the world, be it Bank of England, the Federal Reserve, or the European Central Bank, down the route of, kind of edging towards or can lay the, the, the groundwork for higher interest rates, but there's not, but central bankers, some of them made a, made a clear last week that they won't be altering their policy because of uh, higher interest rate yields uh, and also higher interest rate yield, higher, higher interest, higher, higher, they won't be increasing uh, interest rates because of the higher yields in bond markets. Now, they, they use the argument that higher um, bond bond yields indicates that you know the markets are pricing in further increase in growth down the down the line which is not unexpected um here in the uk over 20 over 20 million people have been vaccinated so that bodes well for the reopening of the economy in addition to that um there is kind of gathering hopes that in the near term uh, the us government the biden administration will sign off on the 1.9 trillion dollar stimulus package so that should also uh, give a lift to the US economy. So for all these reasons, uh, we've kind of a, a retreat in government bond deals uh, has kind of paved the way uh, for kind of bullish sentiment across the board. Now, what I'll do with the video, as I always do, I'll run through the major uh, uh, economic and corporate events of the week ahead, and then I'll look at the big, a look at the big, um, big markets, the indices, the currencies, and the commodities. So I'll go into our weekend article, which can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under latest news and analysis. So today, uh, we have a number of US, big US companies in focus. Um, Novax, uh, in relation, they have their Q4 numbers which are coming out after the close uh, of play tonight. Uh, they've, their share price uh, rallied to an all-time high last month on the back of uh, its strong COVID-19 vaccine results. Uh, we also have a number, we also have Q4 figures coming out from Zoom, Zoom Communications. Uh, they've done, they said a great 2020 in, in relation to the surge in demand um, for video conferencing because of the rise of working from home. Um, looking at to tomorrow, when the big uh, US retailers target, they have Q4 numbers coming out. Keep an eye out on their book of all their kind of sales, same store sales, in particular their online sales. Uh, it's also likely that, that they're going to have unique COVID-19 related costs, which has been common across the board for retailers. Uh, we've got a couple of big house builders from the UK reporting figures this week. Uh, Taylor Wimpy, I'll pull your numbers tomorrow. Uh, and then looking ahead um, a couple of days time, I believe we have Persimmon. Um, also tomorrow in the UK, or across, the, across the world, we have the global um, services PMI reports that kind of be, gives indication of how the um, how services are faring up in the major biggest economies of the world. Keep in mind uh, it is the final reading for February so we've already had flash figures out from the UK, Germany, France and also the US. Um, as I mentioned Persimmon, the UK home builder, they have funding numbers coming out uh, on Wednesday. Um, house builders are, have been doing well this morning. Uh, there's talk that on the, uh, the UK budget which will be coming out on Wednesday, which I mentioned in a second. Uh, this talk that we're going to have, uh, included in the budget, is going to be um, is going to be a government-backed guaranteed scheme of 95% mortgages. So that's given a boost to the uh, the share price of um, of the of the home builders. Also, the speculation that we could have an extension to the to the um, stamp duty holiday. Uh, the stamp duty holiday. Stamp duty was scrapped on property purchases in the UK or in, in England at least on on, uh, on, on properties worth up to five hundred thousand. Uh, there's talk the, the deadline for that is the end of this month, but there's talk that that is going to be pushed back. Prudential have full your figures coming out on Wednesday. Uh, the big the big kind of political story of the week will be the um will be the 
will be the the uh, will, will be the will be the budget. Uh, Richard Sunak is going to be in the limelight once again, and it's going to, it's going to be focused around what kind of uh, measures uh, are going to be brought in brought in to continue to offer support. Are we going to see an increase in extension to furlough? Are we going to have an um, assistance in terms of um, stamp duty? Are we going to have assistance in in terms of business rates? These are all things uh, that are going to be uh, Trade will be focusing on uh, when it comes to the uh, to the update uh, on Wednesday. Uh, we all, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night, we have the U.S. Beige Book gives an update of um, how, how the U.S. economy is bearing out. Uh, Wednesday, we have uh, a few four numbers out from Vroom, uh, Aviva, uh, the U.K. insurance company, which will be going through a process of spinning off its non-core assets. That will have its budget figures coming out uh, on Thursday and on Friday. The all-important U.S. non-farm payrolls report that's going to be going to be coming out on Friday. In fact, if you click on the link here, non-farm payrolls, you bring us to its own unique page, and from there you'll be able to actually sign up for the webinar, which we're which uh, my colleague Michael Houston will be holding on the 5th of March at 13:15 GMT. So if you're on, feel free to sign up for that. Um, Starting off with the major indices, I'll take a look at the FTSE 100. So the FTSE 100, um, as you can see here, came with a little, little pressure from from, uh, from late into mid, sorry, from mid into late February, but it has been pushing higher again here in the late session. But notice how it is yet to retake this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, and that comes into play in around 6,616 because we're currently trading at 6,570 there thereabouts. So, kind of the more the near term trend from the month of February onwards is still to the upside. Um, well, the, the even near the even shorter term trend is to the downside. We seems to me to be at a potentially have a crucial point. Could we retake the 50-day moving average, retest the highs in late February, and then go on to test the highs of mid February? Or if we fail to, to retake the 50-day moving average, the market could, could turn lower on itself. And keep in mind, it has been the market has been in a bit of a bearish trend for the past couple of weeks. So, if it does manage to, to, to retake the 50-day moving average, we could be looking at testing the highs of late February. Beyond that, we could be looking at cutting it towards around 6,800 there thereabouts, the highs of mid February. And then, if we go beyond that, we could be looking up towards retesting the uh, multi-month highs or the near year highs that were set back in January. On the flip side, if the market manages to fails to retake the 50-day moving average and it turns over on itself, should we be should we take out uh, the lows of last week? We could then be looking heading back down towards the lows of early February in around 6,308. And then, if you go beyond that. We can then be looking heading down for this zone here around 6,248. Over in Germany, now the, Germ the, the DAX is in better shape. Because keep in mind, it wasn't that long ago, only about a month ago, the DAX uh, was at an all-time high. So if you can notice here on the DAX, similar scenario has been moving, broadly speaking, been moved lower from mid-February through uh, late February, but notice how the DAX has actually retaken its 50-day moving average, its, blue, its uh, respective 50-day moving average, and that comes into play in around 13,854, this blue line here. So while it holds above that, that metric, it's likely that the broader upward trend, which has been in place for several months now, is going gonna, gonna to remain intact. If that is the case, we could be looking at retesting 14,000. Building upon 14,000, we could then be looking potentially at retargeting the highs of mid-February and then beyond that up towards the all-time highs that were set at the beginning of the month. If, on the other hand, like, let's not forget that from mid from, from mid-February onward, there's been you know, kind of a series of higher highs and higher lows. Um, I know we're, we could be at a crucial point here, but if the market fails to take off 14,000, and it turns lower, and if you take off the lows of Friday, we could be then look heading it back down towards the lows seen in at the beginning of the well, beginning of February, uh, in around thirteen thousand two hundred and sixty-three, and a move below that could take us down toward this zone here, in around just north of thirteen thousand, in around kind of thirteen thousand and thirty there thereabouts. Um, taking a look at what's going over on the U.S. Starting off with the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones, not even that long ago, only last week, set up a new all-time high. But the bullish move was short-lived. This is a very bearish candle that we saw here on Thursday the 25th. In fact, 
for a clear example of a, of a engulf bullish engulfing candle. In fact, even even the even the open that we saw didn't even actually get up as high as the close that was achieved on the Wednesday. So you can see this this red rectangle here, the body, um, essentially kind of not quite, but almost fully engulfed the, the, the body of the previous day's positive candle. So we so it wasn't a surprise after seeing that candle that we had a sharp move lower on Friday, but notice today. We're, we're, um, on Friday, we close above the 50-day moving average, this blue line here. We're holding above the 50-day moving average, uh, which comes into play at 30,933. While we hold above that metric, it's likely that the kind of broader upward trend could continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking heading back up towards um, 31,600, maybe just north of it. You can see here on a few occasions that zone, um, maybe say 31,000 up to 600, 700, there, thereabouts. That zone actually has resistance on a few occasions. So collective resistance again. If you move beyond that, we can then be looking at targeting the all-time highs that were set only last week. If, on the other hand, we do have a, a fairly, fairly sizable move to the downside, if you take out the lows that were seen at uh, the back end of last week, once again, we could take us back down towards, well, back down towards 30,000, this big psychological number, but also that area kind of coincides with this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which you can see active nicely as support back in late September, the active bot is kind of both support and resistance in, in November. Um, so keep an eye out for that area, it's kind of 30,000 and the 100-day moving average comes into play just south of it at 29,979. I'll take a look what's going on with the S&P 500, the other big uh, US index. Similar scenario, but notice how the S&P 500 achieved its all-time high in the middle of February rather than the, the end of the month, whereas, which, which was the case for the Dow Jones. But nonetheless, in a very bearish candle on Thursday, it moved lower on Friday to kind of a multi-week low, but once again, like with the Dow Jones, it's, above, it's holding above its 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 3,818. While we hold above that metric, it's like a kind of wider upward trend should continue. If that's the case, we could be looking at targeting at 3,900. Move beyond that could take us up towards the, the highs of last week. And then if you, if you clear those highs, the traders will then be looking up towards the all-time highs that were set in the middle of the month. Similar scenario, if you take out the lows of last week, we, that would then kind of put us in kind of, you know, well, about a, about a month, one month low, about a four, four or five week low. Uh, and that would kind of suggest that the near term negative trend is still in play. Should that be the case, we could look at heading back down toward the similar scenario again, the lows of early February in around 3,664. Once again, notice how that metric there isn't too far away from 100 moving average at 3,682. And we can see here on a couple of occasions, back in September, also in November, that metric 100 moving average, the yellow line, uh, did act as both support and resistance. So keep an eye for that metric in the future. Turn your attention on what's going on in currencies. So, the, uh, take a quick look first off at the uh, at the US dollar. Now, here we, we here at CMC offer forex indices, which we found under the library under forex indices. And one of the one in, in interesting industry markets we'll talk about is the CMC USD index. A forex index operates in a similar fashion to that of a stock market index in that. Um, it's going to comprise, it's the, in this case, it's the US dollar marked against a composition of several other currencies, be it the euro, be it the British pound, be it the Swiss, you know, be it the Swiss franc, be it the Australian dollar, so on and so forth. So we can see here that it was in a solid downward trend for quite some time. It achieved a multi-year low in early January. Since then, it had a decent recovery through to February, had a pullback, and it's moving higher yet again. So the lows of late February didn't take out the lows of January, and now we're moving higher again. We're back above this 50 to move the average. The question some traders will be asking is, are we going to see a kind of, a, a, are we going to see the, the, the dollar as a whole trade be in a range for quite some time? Or is it looking to actually break out of the kind of broader trend, negative trend that's been in place? So if we do have a move above the, the highs of early February or above the highs of mid-December, that could signal, guess what, the dollar is, is actually turning higher. So with that in mind, uh, take a look at what's going on with a couple of big currency pairs, starting off with euro dollar and then also on pound dollar. So we, can, we talked about how the 
the dollar is probably a bit of a base. But it seems to, and we could be looking at building on that from here, but also potentially it could also turn lower. So we can see here at the, this was a this this the lowest uh, the high in euro dollar in early January was its highest mark uh, in nearly three years, uh, kind of well over two years that was on the set. Since then we've had you know, a move to the downside. It rebounded. Uh, it very briefly, you know, had a decent rally on on uh, last Thursday, but notice how it's back below the 50-day moving average. It's in the red again today because there's, there's a broad move higher in the US dollar. We seem to have a turning point. Are we going to move lower? Are we going to take off the lows of late of early February and head head back down towards one spot 18? Should that be the case, you can even look at the head back down towards the lows of early November in around one spot 16.02. But on the flip side, if you do manage to get a pull back the recent losses, retake the 50 day moving average in at one spot 21.47, could be a sign that the kind of broader upward trend is going to continue. We really need to take out the highs of last week in a one spot 2242 uh, before we can get it, before we become confident that the kind of wide upper trend is going to be back in play. Should that be the case, we could then be looking at retesting the highs of early uh, early January. Taking a look at what's going on with the British pound versus the US dollar. So once again, the pound a great run against the dollar very recently. The pound's been very strong against the dollar. It's, it's correction really. really really kicked in at the back end of last week. So it's, it's very much in a solid upward trend. It wasn't that long ago, it, it was it was achieving multi-year highs, not quite three-year highs, but kind of well over two-year highs on pound dollar. So it's in a strong upward trend. It has cooled a little. While it holds above this 50-day moving average, the blue line in a one spot 3715, it's like a broader upward trend is going to continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking at heading up towards one spot 4376. On one spot 4376, was the highs that was achieved uh, in early 2018. Now, if we do move to the downside in uh, in pound dollar, we could find support for this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. But also, that could nicely support in the middle of December and also in late December, and that comes into play in at one spot 37615. So we talked about uh, if you, um, if there's been recently some strength in the U.S. dollar. Gold is listed and traded in US dollar, so a stronger dollar often impacts, pushes pushes uh, gold lower, which is precisely what we've seen. Only on Friday, uh, we saw gold fall back to levels last seen uh, in June of 2020. So we're talking about multi-month lows were achieved. The wider downtrend is very clear, very very obvious. Should that, should that continue? And if you fall, we're currently trading at 17.42. If you take off the lows of Friday, we could be looking heading back down towards 1700, you know, what kind of big number that traders will be looking out for. And if you go up below that, we could then be looking heading back down towards the lows of early June 2020 in around 1670. And um, any moves to the upside could need to kind of be taking off the highs of late February. You kind of, you know, we have a nice series of a, you know, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low. So we need to be kind of taking out these kind of highs that were these lower highs. So a move to the upside could take us back towards 1800 and then beyond that up towards 1816. And notice how the, the, the high here in mid February um, in around 1855 kind of called, ran into resistance at that red line there, the 200 moving average. So that's a really kind of good barometer for if you're below the 200 moving average, a market is generally considered to be weak. If your market's above it, it's generally considered to be strong. So we'd really need to be taking off that dirty moving average at 15, sorry, apologies, at 1858 um, before we can begin to think perhaps that the wider negative trend has been shaken off. Uh, and then lastly, I'll take a look at what's going on in the oil market. Brent crude oil is in quite, is in quite a decent position. Uh, it's been on, on, a, on a very positive run recently. It wasn't that long ago. Only last week we saw fresh 13-month highs being set up. It has come off ever so slightly. This general kind of, you know, um, kind of uh, bearish sentiment of cooling in the market. It has drifted lower, but it's still in very much in its upward trend. On Brent crude oil, the cash market, we are trading at 65 by 87. If the broader bullish trend continues, the next big level to watch out for, people will be keeping an eye out for 70 bucks a barrel. Uh, if you do manage to move lower from here, we could be looking at targeting the lows of the mid of um mid-February in around 62 spot 18 and if you go below that we could be looking down heading down towards the $60 per barrel. 
Uh, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.